I don't have to tell you that COVID has changed the way the church does a lot of things and the way the church thinks about a lot of things. And I want to talk to you a little bit about digital technology and the sacraments. And to do that, I want to just start a a basic understanding of what sacraments are. Now, admittedly, the church is not always of one mind on this and our different denominations are going to have potentially slightly different takes on this. I'll say more about that in a minute. But Generally speaking, one definition that's often used that many in the church would agree upon is that a sacrament is a visible and tangible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. So it's a physical thing by which God gives us God's grace. Now, I don't know about you, but that's amazing. That's an amazing thought. You take a hike in the woods and the dew falls from the leaf and you hear God's voice. Now, I I think, in fact, that's how the world was originally created to be. But I don't know about you all, that doesn't always happen to me. And this is where we might want to drill down a bit. There are plenty, the hope is that that all of creation is sacramental. That is, it reveals God to us. But a sacrament carries another kind of level to it. And that's where, again, most of the church would agree that a sacrament has to have some biblical scriptural promise in it. So Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Go, baptize. Uh, word, um, a sacrament of the Lord's Supper with baptism, right? You can see that. Uh, others would say, well, it's not always a command, but it's something where God promises to meet us in a physical thing that we see in Scripture. So Jesus shows up at the wedding of Cana, and he turns water into wine. This is why in the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church, marriage is considered a sacrament. Now, different denominations are going to have different understandings of how we look at Scripture, and that's why we get different numbers of sacraments. But the bulk of the church agrees that at least baptism and the Lord's Supper are, the, are, are shared upon, agreed upon sacraments. So it's a physical sign, outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace that has a biblical promise in this that we see in Scripture. Uh, but I would add one more thing. Because uh, I was a youth minister for years. Um, I don't know if it's how popular it is now, but for a while, there's, you know, youth ministers would argue you could use chips and Coke when you celebrate the Lord's Supper because just Jesus used the common ingredients of the day. Um, I would say that there's, there's another dynamic here that changes a bit. Um, sacraments are by and for the church. So sacraments are not private. They are intrinsically communal. They're intrinsically, I would argue, physical, and I'll say more about that. And they're to actually make us more like Jesus. And they're connected to the head of the church, which is Christ himself, who sat at a real table and broke real things called bread and wine. Now, if you put all that together, you can see how it poses at least, makes us at least give pause to thinking about what's at stake in doing online communion. And I will say, I'm going to focus predominantly on on the Lord's Supper, not so much baptism. I don't know a lot of churches that are doing um, private online baptisms, but we'll look at at the Lord's Supper. Um, So some thoughts I have on this. First of all, and I'd say maybe the biggest concern I have, it's really clear when you read early Christian leaders going way back, um, they look at what God did in becoming flesh as the breaking open of the possibilities of, of sacraments. Where, where the world pushed God away in the fall and sin has inhibited the created world's ability to manifest God to us, God actually breaks into our mess in a very gritty, physical way and becomes human. And this says something profound, namely that God cares about the physical, that God is invested in the physical. And because of this, God actually can take the physical and convey it in promised ways to strengthen our faith. Now, you can see already that that poses a problem, perhaps, when we start thinking about what is real, what is physical, when we think about online communion. A related issue here is the second point I made about the church. If sacraments are by and for the church, the church gathered together, how is that blurred when we start thinking about digital church? I won't deny the fact that I've experienced fellowship when I've been able to log in to my church's worship service, um, but it's not the same. I think most of us would agree on this. I, I, I live uh, on the other side of the country from my, my folks, and I uh, have a, a nine-year-old son, and, and I give thanks for the technological ability to stay involved in their lives and to see them, but I wouldn't confuse that for a minute as the same as actually getting to hug my mom 
is getting to see my father lift my son up and, and make him laugh. It's not the same. And by the same token, is there something lost when we take away the physical gathering of the church and at least how the church has historically understood the sacraments role to be by and for the gathered church. Someone once said that Jesus didn't say those are my body, but Jesus said, this is my body. There's a specificity to the sacraments. And as a matter of fact, early Christian liturgies talk about the bread, the one loaf being symbolic of the church coming together as one on the same day that Jesus was risen from the dead. I wonder what happens when we go to online communion, how that reality is muted at best, if not disregarded. So those are some concerns I have about online communion. Um, and I would add that in a consumer culture, while the impulse to care for each other and to provide some sense of connectivity is really important, it's godly, sometimes in a consumer culture, the impulse is to always want it now. And in fact, there have been seasons in the life of the church historically where people have fasted from the Lord's Supper, either through lament, through preparation, they fasted. And I wonder if perhaps during this time of pandemic, when we are unable to gather together in specificity, in real physical presence, if maybe our impulse to go to online communion is understandable, but perhaps um, mis depriving us of a really countercultural opportunity to say, Maybe we'll wait. Maybe we won't dive in immediately. And maybe that, when we come back together, we'll celebrate it with that much more richness. Final thought on this. Um, one of the things that has transformed my faith as I think deeply about sacraments is the idea that God meets me in the sacraments even when I don't feel it. And that's because if second point I made about sacraments is true, that what makes something a sacrament is something in scripture that God has promised to meet us in the physical, um, I stop and think about the one who has promised. Luther said, when you take the Lord's Supper, remember the one who meets you there, the one who promised to meet you there. It's the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And so that means even when I don't feel it, be, God promises to meet me in these promise means through this promise method of gathering around word and table in the physical community on, as we gather to gather around the one loaf, and when I've heard many people make a case for, for online communion, one of the main words, things I hear or have heard is that it's, it's meaningful. And I don't doubt that. I don't deny that God can, can use, can't use anything to convey God's presence to us. That's, the, that's God's sovereignty. That's God's prerogative. But the beautiful thing about sacraments is it is a promised means by which God meets us. My concern when we so push away the promised ways why God has met his people through the past in the life of the church and the sacraments, when we so flatten that, when we so expand the envelope, it might be initially meaningful, but what happens when it's not? The thing that's so compelling for me about the sacraments is even when I don't feel it, God has the firm foundation of meeting me through these promised means. And I worry sometimes in our haste that perhaps we've eroded the normal promise means by which God meets us. Now, regardless of where you are in this, I hope this gives you something to think about. I hope rather than hearing the worship cop uh, telling you the do's and don'ts, it at least helps you think about how the church universal has historically thought about sacraments and what's at stake when we think about the digi using digital technology, uh, specifically when we think about sacraments. Mm -hmm.